saying, you caught me checking out my newest crush, the Enchanted Living Magazine. It's been a great mail week. This is the newest edition, which is the Magical Beasts edition. And you know, it's actually quite perfect because you know what else came in this week is my new Oracle deck from Jessica Swift. This is her newest edition, the Animal Allies 2. We're gonna take a look inside these. I also have some new gemstones in my lair, helping me to connect with my inner dragon. It's kind of really fun how synchronistically all these animal related things are all coming together. I also have been playing inside my journal. We'll take a closer look in here. And you know, for those of you who know me, I love creating with collage intuitively. And something showed up here in my journal and I worked intuitively, just said, oh, I like this image, putting it in. I did a little research and lo and behold, perfect guidance for what element we're going to work with this week in the Oasis in our soul journey. Go grab your favorite drink and get a treat, kick back and relax, and we'll connect some dots and we'll begin this fun adventure with my new crushes. So let's begin by taking a look inside the Enchanted Living magazine. It was originally called the Fairy Magazine and it completely new to me. It does not disappoint. And I'm going to show you just a few of the many magical, amazing spreads that are in this magazine, beginning with this cover story, which is absolutely stunning. You can see a color palette of that black and white and red, and each model has all three of those colors. Turning the page, that same artist has done this magical, beautiful imagery with the swan and then a deer in the forest. Definitely a Russian princess there. Look at that. All right, so let's flip over to Kamira Wachna. Look at this artist's work. The owl. We were just connecting with the owl last week when we were working with Athena in our Oasis session. And then look at the snake. I always open sacred space, calling upon the winds from the south, calling upon Amaru, the great snake. And here we see the snake paired with all of those doves. What a lovely way to depict making peace with our, our snake and, and shedding the skin, shedding the old ways of being and thinking and feeling and doing those things that we've outgrown, making peace with that so we can shed that skin and move into that vibrant new way of being and doing. That's what we do every week at the Oasis, opening up sacred space with connecting with that animal ally of great Amaru. And here, what a beautiful depiction of that. Look at this one. This is, we are all fans of Juniper Fox. Look at this fox. What does it remind you of? We recently had at the Oasis a session on the animal allies. Gosh, it's like they curated this issue for us here at the Oasis. And look at the playful fox. How adorable is this? Oh. All right, I'm gonna show you one more spread because Again, more connections with us. There is an article here called The Beauty of the Dragon. And in it, there is an elixir, a recipe for creating dragon fire, a beauty oil. And also what's another fun synchronicity, synchronicity is that I recently picked up, this is before this just who came in, some dragon bloodstones, check them out. This is a type of quartz known for its green and red coloration. <clears throat> and you're, you know, we were talking about how our inner dragon lives in our solar plexus. We connected with that in our summer solstice oasis session, also in a previous collecting pearls video in this video log. So we talked about that dragon and really developing a relationship with that because our inner dragon is our ally. It's not to be to be fought and overthrown, but in fact, to use it 
its power and call upon that power within. You know, the the, the solar plexus chakra is um, called Manipura, and that translates to mean jeweled city. So if you think about it, what is your jeweled city? This is your power center. Your solar plexus is that, that area within you that is your identity, who you are. Your self-worth is that's where, you know, you've got some low, you don't feel like you're enough. You're not feeling like um, you're worthy. Work on your solar plexus. And don't forget, I have those solar plexus chakra stencils that you can get and create that chakra art as you connect with your solar plexus. Back to the dragon blood stone and what it means. So you work with this stone when you need to balance your mind, your body, and your emotions, when you need some courage to overcome some obstacles. Great stone to have in your collection of gemstones with your healing. So that's a little bit of what's inside the enchanted living magazine gotta get it look in the description below for a link to this and not only when you go to the website to subscribe you'll also be sure to look at the back issues there are a number of them that are available as free pdf downloads and for all you mermaids out there there's gorgeous mermaid issue totally had my mermaid tail wagging when i downloaded it again incredible beauty incredible enchantment i love that word by the way enchanting just so love it. It, it it's as if this magazine is the official magazine for the oasis let's just face it i think i'm calling it that i mean that's how much i love it all right let's talk about what else i'm crushing on these days this came in this week eagerly awaiting this i have jessica swift's other or animal allies card deck this one does not disappoint. Let's take a look. When you first open it up inside, it says magic messages abound. When you look inside the bottom, it says, listen closely, ear to the wind. So I shuffled, I shuffled the cards and these are the three cards that came up for me. I, re I got egret, which was perfect because at the time of pulling these cards this week, Someone near and dear, someone lovely, someone I adore, was very upset with me, very explosive. And you know what? I think that's the sign of the times. Not only is Mercury in retrograde right now, so we got to watch what we're saying, but it's going to continue to be intense, clearly, with the planet Mars, which is known as Mars is known as the god of war going into the sign of Aries and staying there until January. My friends, this is going to be intense. Aries is that fire starter, Aries. And if you've got God of War with Aries, the collective consciousness right now, it's all really intense here in here in the US, especially with what's going on politically. We're not going to go there. We're not going to go into specifics. We know with the whole COVID thing, we know it's intense. Well, let's see, what does Jessica say? Lovely woman, I love and adore her work and her spirit. So what does she say about the egret? I was really impressed with this. Harmony, working together for the greater good, respect for yourself and for others, grace, peace. Egret's feathers are sometimes used in sacred ceremony to remove negative energy like anger, and how you can invite Egret in to help remove these same things from your own life experiences. Talk about pairing well with the dragon, right? Bringing these two allies together, these two very different energies of like fire and uh, air. Wow. Well, when I read that in that moment, I had a quiet time by myself as I pulled this in my heart. I was really feeling for my sweetheart. And when I read this, I was like, yep. Instead of, I was really mindful that we were Mercury retrograde. I did, I bit my tongue. I really just didn't try to react and defend myself. I was just like, no, I can see, I can feel the pain of my loved one. And then reading that, I was like, yep, I'm gonna continue moving forward with peace and respect 
and harmony. Well, I picked a couple more cards. And the second one, Caterpillar. We all know Caterpillar is about transformation. And harmony helps us to transform. When we bring peace and loving kindness, that helps us with transforming. Whether it's transforming a heated moment or it's the transformation of something that we want to change in our lives, yes, peace. We're going to bring peace to it. And then the third card, I absolutely loved it because it's the lemur. The lemur is all about fun and playfulness and even has that orange color in the background, which is that color of the sacral chakra. This is about creativity and the seat of our creativity. Oh yeah. So what does she say about lemur? Fun eccentricity living in your own world of your own making yes that's what we do here at the oasis and here on my my world here on youtube we're all about creating our own fun right secret knowledge navigation and guidance she asks a question how can lemur help you blaze your own unique trail today with ease and creativity yeah that's that um, is a water element, that sacral chakra, right? It's the, it has the crescent moon right at the center of that sacred geometry of the classic. So that helps us to connect with our emotions because it's ruled by the moon. We're in the sign of cancer this month. The moon child, very emotional, right? Connecting with our feelings. But we can play with that when we go through um, exploring our world through our senses. You know how I love to play. I love to play in my journal, and I did play in my journal this week. Let's, let's switch over and take a closer look at my journal page this week and what it has to say. Now don't forget, look below for links on how to get to Jessica Swift's website and to order those cards. Highly recommend it. You know I love Animal Allies, great tool. To connect with animals is her deck. All right, now over to my journal. So to start this journal spread, on the left-hand side, you'll see the background is painted with purple and blue inks. That was to cover up some notes that I had taken on that page that were just really processing some ideas that I knew I didn't want to keep in the journal. Then I added the Saturn glyph and that I had painted on a, another page um, and cut it out and inserted it there. Really love the contrast of that against that dark purple background. And I've been thinking a lot about Saturn, that planet. Talked about it in other um, videos here on my YouTube channel as well as within the Oasis. It is in retrograde until the end of September. It is transiting Capricorn. So some of you might remember a couple years ago, I had hosted an online vision journal course and I would mail out these envelopes that I designed. And I happen to have one of these in my stash of collage items and that had some things in it I hadn't used in a long time. So I pulled it out. There was this dictionary page and couldn't believe I was reading through to see what words were on there and the word eclipse was there, that's what you see in the journal page. How cool is that? Love, it was so synchronistic. And whenever that happens, I always feel like I'm exactly where I need to be. So Saturn transited Capricorn back in December, 2017. It's now transiting in Capricorn for this full moon eclipse and, and it's in retrograde. Whenever a planet is in retrograde, it invites us to look either inward or to look back, to rewind, to reflect. And so it's giving us an opportunity to take, say, hey, what happened back in December 2017 and what lessons have you learned? Because Saturn is all about those hard lessons in life. So as I'm looking back, I'm asking myself, what mistakes have I made in that time? Or um, what are some things that really need my attention that I've maybe have overlooked or neglected? Um, that sort of thing. And Saturn, the energy and the emphasis of Saturn is that hard lesson. Because if we're trying to ignore it and sweep it underneath the carpet, usually something happens that, that forces us 
to do that truth telling. So yeah, think about the lessons that you've learned, uh, the fears, unfulfilled dreams, mistakes, limiting or outdated beliefs, habits. Uh, you know, when Saturn is in retrograde, things may move slower than you'd like, triggering disappointment and doubt. Because Capricorn's an Earth sign, I thought that I would use brown colors here and really emphasize like the earthy muckiness of it. The word courage is showing up a lot this week and I think is it takes courage to face and do that truth telling. And I came across this quote that says, life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. So this week I came across a book in my bookshelf that I forgot I even had and as I pulled it out, it tucked inside was a birthday card I received a number of years ago that I absolutely love the image. It's why I saved it. It was using it as a book card and you can see it here. The mandalas are balloons and then there's this whimsical looking person flying with this gift. So to cover up where it said happy birthday, I cut out a piece of paper from a magazine image and I was reflecting on the gift we give ourselves when we do that truth telling. And when we do the truth telling, it leads to some relief because we're no longer carrying that weight inside of us. It can also lead to change and transformation because again, I say this every, all the time, where our attention goes, the energy flows, things get moving. So when we bring it out from within, ooh, we see it, we start taking action, things start moving, things start happening. And then that leads to freedom because we no longer feel that monkey on the back. Oh, yes, that's not a good feeling to have a monkey in the back. We want to have the monkey right here and have a conversation with it. So what mistakes have you made, huh, monkey mind? Hmm? Or are you asking me? Oh, I think you're being, he's, he's like acting like, Saturn. So it might be your finances, it might be your health, a relationship. Hmm, take a look at different areas of your life. Don't worry about it. We're going to work with it at the Oasis. Yes. You don't have to tell anybody when you go to the Oasis, so you can keep it to yourself, but we're going to bring it into the soul journey. Yeah. Yeah. We can do this. Yes. I might be nagging in your head, but we can do this. Yeah. Let's do it. The other thing that I was thinking about it was where Saturn's showing up in my natal chart. Your natal chart, just for review, is where the planets and stars are in the sky at the time that you were born. And for me, Saturn is in Aries. Aries is that fire sign. It is, you know, I get these big ideas. I get excited and I just really want to go real quickly and just start doing, 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 working really fast. Saturn is always slowing me down. It's always like making me put, hit the pause break or things don't develop as fast. I struggle with, you know, I have these ideas and they just don't seem to really like go anywhere. I mean, I do great work, but like the results are not there, at least not as fast as I would like them to be. You see on my journal page, a Pegasus. And that came from my order from Jessica Swift tucked into the envelope with those oracle cards. I took it out and as I'm peeling it off, I'm moving fast because I do. I just, I'm kind of like a bull in a china shop too, you know, and I'm just like quickly working. I get so excited. And as I'm pulling the Pegasus off, I nearly tore the head off. It tears and then it's made me slow down. I'm like, hmm. And as I'm, I'm carefully putting it, peeling it off and putting it in my journal, I'm laughing because once again, I was rushing and Saturn is always saying to me, Catherine, hold your horses. Don't lose your head. <laughs> I'm cracking up. It's so funny. It's so funny that it keeps coming up. Slow it down. Slow it down. It will be time for you to fly, but not right now. Put your feet back on the ground. Take things step by step. <laughs> That's what Saturn teaches me is to slow down and to not doubt 
when things aren't moving as fast as I hope. Okay, here's another thing I was thinking about. All right, Capricorn's an earth sign, and we're also in the sign of Cancer, and that's a water sign. It's all the emotions. And when things don't go as we hoped and we feel like they're too slow moving, we might get emotional, right, it's Cancer. And when you get earth and water together, what do you get? Mud. And sometimes we feel like we're stuck in the mud. And then I got thinking, okay, what's gonna help us get unstuck? What's gonna help us to lighten up? And that's where the element of air came in and the idea of a breath of fresh air. <laughs> and then, and how it feels when we get some breathing room, right? Slowing down can also feel refreshing. So instead of feeling stuck, it can be light. Well, in among my stuff for years i've had this image this beautiful image of a woman from a note card i've had this for 14 years i think waiting for the right moment and and when i was working on my journal this week i'm like oh i really love her and i just cut her out put her down then i looked in the back of the card to see what was the name of the artist i knew it was um john williams waterhouse but i couldn't remember the title of the artwork and it's boreas I'm like, Boris, I looked it up and get this. It's a Greek God who is the God of the North winds. Like how cool is that? And this is his wife. I mean, I, you can see the air, the wind blowing her, her garment, right? And then, all right, wait, it describes this God as having purple wings and the background is purple on my journal page you can't make this stuff up <laughs> you can't i love all these connections and in that moment i had been thinking about designing a new soul journey that we could use at this moment in capricorn we've got that earth and then i'm thinking the water of cancer and we're in mud and then now this breath of fresh air and yes when i put her down it was like, that is what we're going to do. We're going to use and call upon the God of the North winds, call on her husband and bring in that air element to help us to lighten up. You see behind her, there is a Zodiac. There is, that came from a magazine. I can't really remember. I think it might've been Oprah Winfrey's um, O Magazine, I think, don't know. I cut it out and part of it, you know, I overlapped it because it, the whole wheel wasn't in view. And then there was a little part that there was like a comma or something or some yellow thing that was printed over it. And I didn't like the way it looked. So I placed it or I added a little heart sticker and it, it looks like a little speech bubble. And what is it pointing at? What sign? That's Gemini. Gemini, chatty Gemini. That's in my mid heaven. And it's a mental sign. It's ruled by Mercury. And we're going to be speaking from our hearts when we're doing our truth telling. We're going to be speaking kindly to ourselves when we do that truth telling about the mistakes we've made or the dreams that haven't been realized or anything that feels heavy. That's what we're going to be doing this week at the Oasis. Hope you're so inspired. If you're new to my channel and you're really intrigued, you want to learn more about the Oasis, you can go over to my website, truenortharts.com forward slash Oasis to learn more. And also new to, as of today, if you've missed a previous Oasis session, you can access the whole first season. That is the spring 2020 season of 10 Oasis sessions. You can create your own personal retreats and those are not available right now a la carte. So you cannot go and buy the individual ones. When I do get that library of back issues available, those are available at $25 each. So if you buy this bundle, you get all 10, $10 per thing. So it's, it's a really good value of getting that. You have lifetime access to the recordings. Like I said, you can use them to create uh, personal retreats and while you may think, oh, well, it's no longer the um, Taurus new moon, 
you're still learning about Taurus and that soul journey is perfect. For example, we're using that example. It's perfect for um, anytime you want to do a soul journey with the intention of manifesting something in the physical realm. All right, so you can go back and listen to that and do that guided meditation with that intention. Or say the Scorpio full moon, that one, well, you know, in from month to month, the moon actually moves through all of the 12 zodiac signs. So today, for example, it's in Scorpio. Even though we got, you know, we got the cancers, the sun is in cancer, the moon is in Scorpio. That can trigger some deep emotions that come up, right? And that you're dealing with that, or maybe you're getting your stinger out, because we all have a little bit of all of these zodiac signs within us, even if it's not in our natal chart. Well, that's a great soul journey to go back to. We look at celebrating and how that can help us to feel good in difficult times. We also bring in the water element. We do some soothing and relaxing for, for helping us with forgiveness and for that. So each of them, there's more information about when you would use each of those Oasis retreats um, and call upon them over on my website. So definitely check that out in the description below. My name is Catherine Costa from TrueNorthArts.com, the host of the Oasis. Thank you for joining me here on YouTube. Hope you are so inspired. You don't want to miss my next video. And if that's the case, hit that subscribe button, click on the bell. So that way you get an email every time a new video comes out. Hope to see you over at the Oasis this week. And as always, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you.